Hello YouTube. So today I ended up making a copy and a clone of my dog and having AI basically do the stable diffusion and make my photos come out looking really, really nice so that I can end up making some portraits of my dogs. Let's check it out. I think so the best website that I found to do this on is openart.ai. Once you go to this website, you'll see this basic interface here. You may have to sign in like I did, but once you're here, um, you could see a couple different options down below. You could see some of the suggestions people have already done and a little bit of the prompts that they have to get your art pieces that they've created. So if you need some suggestions and ideas, you can go down below and you can look at what people have already done. As I go through the interface, one of the most important things that I've noticed for people who are a beginner to using AI, whether that be Dolly, ChatGPT, or MidJourney, is a lot of people don't know how to prompt what they're looking for. So they have a prompt book, which is basically just a PDF that you could end up downloading. And inside that PDF gives you many different examples of whatever type of image you're trying to produce. Here's the prompts that you're going to need to produce this set of image. So if you have issues or you want to get a specific type of image, they also have a really good PDF template to let you know what to prompt to get that image out. This went straight to photo booth and on photo booth, you get this screen that ends up popping up. Sorry. So, Basically, what they're asking for is you to just give them a couple photos. From this screen, you've got a couple different options. So start creating is what I ended up clicking. My AI models is for if you've already created a couple different models, you can go see the ones that you've created. But I clicked on start creating and you get four different categories at this point to choose from. Whether you're a female, a male, you're doing it on a pet or something else entirely. And it can help categorize what it's going to be doing so when it trains the model, it can push it a little bit closer towards your specific niche that you're making. So I'm making one of my pet. So I will click pets. From here, you're gonna get a whole bunch of different stylized packages. When you first come to OpenAI, your first package is gonna be free almost every single time. So you open up that up, you're gonna look at your different style packages. It has the options of all, male, female, pets, anime, photorealistic, already at the top to kind of help categorize what you're looking for. Since we're doing a pet, I clicked on pet, and as you can see here, these are $1.99, $10. They actually have a price here, so what this is, is some other person came on to openart.ai. They inserted their prompts, and those prompts ended up producing these types of images. And because openart.ai liked the images that were produced and the prompts that were there, this person was actually able to post their prompt on here as a nice little package for anybody to purchase. So not only if you want to use it, you can, but you can also use it to make a little bit of money if you're really good at prompting and you want to put them all your different packages on here. After you've selected your package, you go ahead and click on one of these. You can see a different options that come out throughout it. You click select, confirm, and it ends up taking you back to the same page puts your little package in the bottom left, and then as you can see, it'll end up being $10. If you hit continue, it takes you to the pay screen. One of the good parts about this pay screen is most AI right now is a subscription-based model. This is a purchase your package, go on about your day type model. So it's a one-time purchase, and then you don't have to remember to cancel your subscription later. You go in, you put in your information, and you go on about your day. After the pay screen, what it ends up taking you to is straight to the photo booth again. So instead of this time where it says, create your model or look at your AI models, what they show you is a couple different things where you need to put in your prompts and what you're actually working on. So your AI model name should be like just the name of your pet. So mine is Lucy um, or your person, whatever it is, just the name of what you're working on. Your identifier. To identify to me, this is my dog. And then they need a class of what this is, right? So they give you examples down below, a simple word slash token that represents your training object, my puppy, John Doe, etc. You will use this in your prompt. So instead of my dog, I can say the name of my dog here, just like I did at the very top. This would be the name of your whole model. So like, my couch potato. And then down below that, you've got your class. So you're gonna put your whatever type of animal it is, person, human, female, male, dog, cat, whatever. 
Once you've got those in here, they use stable diffusion to end up making your art look a little bit better. So they're just kind of explaining how their process works and the experiments behind the models of stable diffusion. And you get a drop down menu over here where you just drag and drop your photos into it. So if we're gonna just drag and drop photos, I went and collected quite a few photos of my dog real quick so that I can do it of her. Copy, paste, drag, drop, and it puts them all in there. It starts loading them. What you need to do at this point is make sure that you center on these photos your dog to be in the middle so that it's much easier for them to capture your dog's face. Now, it also gives you above a couple examples as to what you should be looking for when putting these in here. So for your guidelines, it says we need 15 to 30 photos, we need five at least close up portrait photos, five portrait photos from your body's half body or front, and then five photos of your pet's full body. With this here, once you put in those photos, it basically should have enough information to start doing all the photos and images that you're looking for and be able to capture the whole image of your dog in like a 360 view because it's got enough different angles. Down below it then says your pet should be the center of each photo. Since it needs to be the center of each photo, that's what we just did here. We adjusted so that my dog Lucy is in the center of each every single box. That way I don't have to take the photo and center it myself. I can just put it in here and center it here. You click upload, it starts uploading all your different photos. Once they're finished and it's got all of them complete, you click start training, okay, and it goes into your queue. After it's done training your model, taking your photos and then set them and said, hey, now we need to generate some photos and your model's done and trained. You click on that, could take about an hour to end up training your model total. You're gonna get to this page here, which looks a little bit clunkier than what most people would expect, but that's fine because at the very top, it tells you what you need to do. So this is my couch potato of a dog, right? Is the module I'm doing. So your identifier in class just below that, you can see it says my dog in hashtags and then dog, beautiful, fun, and creative for your prompt. If you don't type it in right, if you click on this chip above, the actual thing that it's got identified for you, it'll move that prompt down below immediately, which should make it much, much easier. Um, also, it has a couple extra options. So prompt discovery, a prompt book, and a prompt template. If you click on the template, it's gonna take you to their templates. It takes a second to load, but then you've got a couple different options for what you're doing template-wise. So maybe I want the low poly creatures. And you can see the prompt that they did for their low poly creatures to get those right over here to the left. After you hit submit, you can come down here to the bottom and you can see your status of how it's going. So mine is pending at the moment. After it's done, you basically go back to your photo booth. You go to the one that has your language module. <laughs> you go back to your photo booth and then at that point, you're gonna go to your training module. You're gonna click on the one that you worked on and you should be able to see some photos for that module. So if I scroll all the way down, here's all the different photos of my dog that it came up with for that same exact art style and <laughs> captures how she sits. It's got some weird elongated pieces and doesn't always capture the face. Ooh, that's a good one. However, probably the best part of all of this is once you find the ones that you like in the top right, you get to see the raw image will be downloaded straight to your computer or whatever you're working on and then you get to keep the images that it creates. I ended up messing with it for a while and having a couple different art styles go through. So I did the presets above for your winter style and your minimalistic, but we've got spring, we've got dystopia, we've got fall. So we've got a whole bunch of different options at this point in that same similar theme, that artistic theme, but just different seasons, different areas, hell art style, pretty fun. One really good thing about this screen that I'm seeing is the generate eight more. So if I'm seeing some that are a bit clunky or that I'm not quite looking forward to, so like these right here are close, but not quite what I'm looking for, I can generate eight more. It goes into the queue and then it'll make me eight more photos here in a couple minutes that I get to come back to my photo gallery and check it out.
So if you guys want to actually make your AI photos, your clones, you get a couple different copies. I think this is the best website to do it where you don't have to download a whole bunch of extra stuff. It's just the website itself. It's $10 and you get a whole bunch of templates, a whole bunch of different photos. And I'm pretty sure you get access to them for about 45 days. So if you're interested, check it out.